When you purchase a Galvo laser, the manufacturer will typically provide the needed settings for the included lens. These include bulge, skew, and trapezoid adjustments, which are required for accurate engravings. Anytime you buy a new lens for your laser, you'll need to find these lens-specific correction settings. There are multiple ways to do this, such as the core file program included with EasyCAD. In today's video, we will dial in these lens correction values in Lightburn, along with setting scale, rotation, and the correct orientation for your Galvo. The process will involve engraving a square, taking measurements, adjusting values, and repeating the process until everything is dialed in. As a prerequisite, you need to have your Galvo laser set up in Lightburn, the lens you'll be calibrating installed, and to know the focal distance for your lens. Links will be in the description to our video guides to get you up to speed. You also need a metric ruler or digital calipers and the material you will be repeatedly engraving while dialing in your settings. We recommend black cardstock as it is fairly inexpensive and great for clearly seeing marks. For this example, I installed a 70mm lens that has never been calibrated. Hopping into Lightburn, we will start by clicking on Devices, finding our current Galvo profile, right-clicking on it, and selecting Duplicate. This will pop up the new device wizard, where we will want to change the device name to something unique for this lens. I'm going to keep the same name, but add 70 millimeters to it, so that I can easily tell the devices apart when switching between lenses. We also need to change the size of our work area. I will enter 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters, but you will need to input the field size for your specific lens. For most Galvo lenses, the field size or work area will often not match the number written on the lens. For example, I have a Theta lens that is labeled F290, which does not relate to the work area. This lens only has a work area of 200 by 200 millimeters. We highly recommend looking at the lens manufacturer's specs to get the correct value. Click Finish to exit the new device wizard and OK to close out of the device's window. Make sure your device is active in the laser window. If it is not, click on the drop down list on the far right and select the device you just created. In the top toolbar, click on the wrench icon to open the device settings window. The settings we are going to be adjusting are on the left hand side under Galvo 1 and Galvo 2. If you duplicated an existing device that had values in scale, bold, skew, and trapezoid, you will see them here. We want to remove these corrections and set everything back to default values. This is 100% for the scale factor and a value of 1 for bulge, skew, and trapezoid. If these settings are grayed out, click Clear under Galvo Configuration. The first thing we will check is that the Galvos are assigned to the correct axis, and that the direction or mirror of the engraving is set correctly. To do this, download the Galvo Orientation Calibration Lightburn file in the video description. This was designed for my 70mm lens, so you can choose to scale it, but for this as long as the lines and numbers are visible, you do not need to. For the engraving settings, this will vary based on your machine and material, but for my 30 watt laser using the black cardstock, I'm using a speed of 100 millimeters per second, a power of 80%, and a frequency of 80 kilohertz. After placing the cardstock in our workspace and setting the correct focal distance, we're ready to run a frame. Once we have verified that the engraving is on our cardstock, press start to run the engrave. Unless you had intentionally rotated your Galvo orientation, we want to see the engraving in our workspace match the engraving on our build plate and orientation. This means that the number 2 should be in the top right corner of our upper right square, and the number 1 should be in the bottom left corner of the same square in the correct orientation. If that is the case already, your laser orientation is set correctly, and if not, we will need to make changes. Going into the device settings window, the settings that will affect this are Galvo 1 is x-axis, Galvo 2 is x-axis, and the two reverse direction toggles under 1 and 2. There are 8 possible combinations with only one of them being correct. It is fairly simple to change one setting and run the engraving until you find the correct configuration, but we put together a cheat sheet that will make this easier. You can pause the video to look at which settings make which adjustments to quickly set this correct. Now that our laser orientation has been set correctly, we're going to move on to lens correction, starting with trapezoid. For this, we need to draw a square in our workspace. For our corrections to be as accurate as possible, this square needs to be almost the max field size of the lens. To avoid going beyond the max size, 90 to 95% of the field size is recommended. In the left toolbar, select the square icon to activate the rectangle tool. Holding the shift key, click and drag in the workspace to create a square. 
Then hit the escape key to get back into the selection mode and press P on your keyboard to center the square in the workspace. In the top toolbar, make sure that the lock is closed to lock the aspect ratio and enter the size you want for your square. For my 70mm lens, I will go with 65mm. Make sure to choose a size that is appropriate for your lens. Using the same settings we used for the orientation engraving, we will engrave the square into our cardstock. To check for trapezoid, we're going to measure the length of the top of our square and compare it to the bottom side of the square. We will do the same thing for the left side, comparing it to the right. The lines will likely have some curve to them since we have not adjusted bulge or pinch yet, so measure from the corner points. For my 70mm lens, the top side and bottom side had a 1mm difference, as well as the left and right side. With our beginning default values of 1, the right side measured 79mm, while the left side was 78mm, and I decided to start with the y-axis. Using the reference graphic we put together, we can see that a larger numeric value will make the left side longer, while a smaller value will make the right side longer. Since our right side is longer, we will need to enter a larger value than the current value of 1. This will take some trial and error. We will start by increasing the y-axis value from 1 to 1.05, which is a pretty big jump to give us a baseline. Then, rerun the engraving and check our left and right sides again. This made the left side 82mm and the right side 76mm, so a major overshoot. At this point, we know we need to decrease the number. I ended up nearly halving the difference each time, from 1.05 to 1.025 to 1.01, then 1.005, and finally 1.0025, which gave me a value of 79mm for both the left and right side. With the Y value set, I repeated the process for the X and found the same 1.0025 correction was perfect for the X axis as well. This process is a bit tedious, but thankfully it only needs to be done once per lens. Now that our trapezoid is set, we're ready to check for skew. With our correct trapezoid values in the device settings window, we will run the square engraving again. For skew, instead of measuring and comparing these sides, we will be measuring the diagonal points from top right to bottom left and top left to bottom right. My top left to bottom right diagonal measures 109 millimeters, while my top right to bottom left measures 108 millimeters, so we have a slight skew. To correct this, you can adjust either your x-axis skew or your y-axis skew. Each one will affect one diagonal, and shortening one or lengthening the other will give you the same end result being even diagonals. I decided to adjust the x-axis skew and started at 0.95. This was a major overcorrection and changed my 108mm diagonal to 109mm and my 109mm diagonal to 106mm. In a similar fashion to trapezoid, I have the difference and repeated engraving. I ended up with 0.9975 giving me 108mm for both diagonals correcting the skew. The last lens correction is bulge. With our corrected trapezoid and skew values, we need to run our square engraving again. For bulge, we will measure the top or bottom side of our square and the middle horizontally for X. Then we will measure the left or right side and the middle vertically for Y. The edge length needs to match with the middle length. If it does not, you will need to apply a bulge or pinch value. It's fairly easy to tell if you need to apply bulge or pinch by visual inspection. Using a flat edge from one corner point to another, you can see if the edge lines are straight, bulge out, or pinch inward. We've also put together a graphic for bulge and pinch, which will allow you to see if you need to go with a larger or smaller value. The process will be the same where we enter a value, likely overshoot, and then continually have the values until we are as near perfect as possible. In my case, I needed to correct both the X and Y axis. For the X axis, it needed a pinch with a value of 1.0550, and for the Y axis, it needed to bulge out more with a value of 0.98. Now that our lens corrections have been applied, we're going to continue on to show you how to apply a scale to the axis as well as correct any needed rotation. The scale is much easier to correct using a simple formula. Engraving the same square we've been using, measure from the left side to the right side and the top side to the bottom. My square should be 65 millimeters by 65 millimeters. However, left to right measures 73 millimeters and top to bottom measures 78 millimeters, which is way off. The formula for correcting this is to take the size the square should be, which in my case is 65mm, and divide it by the size it was when measuring. 
For my left to right or x-axis, which is 73 millimeters, the result rounding to the fourth decimal place is 0.8904. We then need to multiply this by our current scale factor, which should be 100%. So changing this value to a percentage, we have a new x scale value of 89.04%. Repeating this process for my top to bottom or y axis that measured 78 millimeters, our corrected value is 83.33%. Running our same square again, we can now see that edge to edge in both directions is 65 millimeters. Last but not least is correcting rotation. This is especially important for using the grid on your laser's bed with fixtures. The easiest way to check this is to install two bolts into the grid or one of the fixture bar pieces that often come with most Galvo lasers. Then, placing the cardstock up against those bolts or bar so that it's parallel to the grid will need to engrave a straight line. I ended up using the same square we've been using since my field size is so small. Having the line be as close to the full length of your field size will also help to get this as accurate as possible. Once complete, measure from the far left side of the line to your bolts or bar and do the same for the far right side. We want these values to match. In my case, I had about a half of a millimeter difference from the far left to the far right, with the left side being half a millimeter closer. A positive angle value in the angle text box will rotate to the left, and a negative value will rotate to the right. I needed to rotate to the left, so I started with one degree. This ended up being too much, so I have the value as a starting point and fine-tuned it after two tries to 0.4. This gave me the same value on both ends of my line. With rotation set correctly, we now have all lens correction values set as well as scale and rotation for the laser. This will ensure that your engravings will be as precise and as accurate as possible. You should now have a much better understanding of the process to calibrate your lens and machine as well as the tools to do so. Once you have these settings, they will be retained in device settings, so you will not need to repeat this process for the lens again. Rotation angle, orientation with the reverse toggles, and which Galvo is X, should be on a machine basis and not something that needs to be changed per lens. However, bulge, skew, trapezoid, and scale will need to be calibrated for each new lens that you get. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any new videos, and check out our existing tutorial playlist for additional guides on mastering Lightburn.